come a time that I will be able to see all of you in the in the um, in the hall. And I hope that something will change in this coming in the in this year. That it will be a good year. And everything that we hoped for will be recompensated this year for everything that we hoped for. My hope is that we would have a real um, a service. But so far we will have to stay online, but we will see. We hope that this year is going to be good and that something good will happen this year. Maybe we'll experience the second coming of Mashiach. This is what we wait for. And this is also a topic that our Parashat Torah speaks about. Let us open the first book of Moses, uh, 49, chapter 49. Let's start with the third verse. Yaakov gathers his son. And we read, gather yourself together and I will tell you what will happen to you in the final times. In the days to come. So this is very interesting that here Yaakov speaks to 12 tri tribes to his 12 sons. And he speaks about the coming days, so the days to come. And our rabbis, our tradition says that whenever we speak about Acharit Chachaim, so the days to come, those are the days that speak about the coming of Mashiach. So from the perspective of our rabbis, from the perspective of tradition, this is what Yaakov wanted to say to his sons has a lot to do with the days of Mashiach, of the Second Coming. This is so interesting that we don't see it at the first time when we read the text, but our rabbis have seen it. So one of the reasons when they were right uh, is in the first verse. As uh, read what Yaakov said to his uh, son Judah. Let's read from 8 till 18. Yehuda, Judah, your brothers will acknowledge you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son, sons will bow down before you. Yehuda is a lion's cub. My son, you stand over the prey. He crashes down and stretches like a lion, like a lioness who dares to provoke him. The scepter will not pass from Yehuda, nor the ruler's staff from between his legs, until he comes to whom obedience belongs. And it is he whom the peoples will obey. 
drying his donkey to the vine, his donkey's cold to the choice grapevine. He washes his clothes in vine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine. We're reading till 12. Almost all of the all of the wise rabbis of Judaism are saying that from eight till twelve we are reading the prophecy about the Messiah about the Messiah. Um, this is a voice. This is a one voice of all of the rabbis from the uh, from the past. Here we would underline that someone would come. Let us read again from eight thirds. Yehuda, your brothers will acknowledge you. He will rule over his brothers. And we know that the, that from the tribe of Judah will come the first king of Israel. I'm not talking right now, right now about Saul, who was, uh, but I, I'm talking about uh, David, who had um, who had a covenant with Lord. and the one who was supposed to rule over Israel. When uh, ja Yaakov um, gathered his sons, he said to Judah, a king will come out of you. And in Israel, there will be kings coming out of you from the tribe of Judah. And from this tribe will be all of the kings um, who will sit on the throne of Israel. And here in the last um, sentence of the eighth verse, we read that father's sons will bow down before you. In the first book of Moses, we already read about bowing down. It was about Yosef. Where his father and also his brothers would bow before him. And then when Yaakov blesses the sons of Yosef, Manasseh and Ephraim, I 
Recall the moment when the sons and Yaakov have bowed down to Yosef. They came to to get some help. They came to be redeemed, to be rescued from hunger. And they came and they received life. He gave them. Uh, he de- he gave them this help, and that was under his rulings. And he gave them a land where they could have been rescued. And this was not the land of Israel, but it was the land of um, Egypt. But still, they would be rescued. And how we already talked about it, we would be rescued, we would be saved this way as well. As our fathers would have had died from hunger, But here again in the 8th verse, we read that Father's Son will bow down before you. But here we read that the salvation and the rescue comes not from Yosef, but from Judah, from Yehuda. So Israelites will come not to Joseph, but to Judah. So all of the following generations will come to Judah. And here we read again that Yehuda is a lion's cub, a lion, young lion. It's also a symbol of the uh, of the kingship. A lion is a symbol of a king. So from this side we see that Judah would be represented by a lion. And that that states in the connection with the kingship over Israel by Judah. And then we again read and it's underlined. And Yaakov says that the kingship of Judah will long, long for a, for a long time. And we read that um, the scepter will not pass from Yehuda, and, uh, and not, and even not the ruler's staff from between his legs. And here we read that Judah will rule over Israel. And in, with the meaning that this ruling will be um, gave to another generation. And we know from the history that later God makes a covenant with David. 
with whom we know that the King of Israel will always be coming from the tribe of Judah. One small commentary. From which uh, tribe is coming David? David. From Yehuda, from Judah, right? This is the fulfillment of the prophecy. So, as we said, from the Jewish perspective, from the perspective of our rabbis, this is a prophecy. Uh, the one that Yaakov said. This is a prophecy for the coming days for the. Acharim, Yamim, Hayamim. So let us read the uh, tenth uh, verse. The scepter will not pass from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his legs, until he comes to whom obedience belongs, and it is him whom the peoples will obey. So the rulings of Judah will be come from generation to generation. This is what we read here. We read about this in 9th that um, the king is coming from Judah's tribe. And then that the offspring of Judah will also step into the calling of kingship uh, until the moment uh, when Shiloh comes which in Russian Bible is translated as a redeemer. Um, but this title, uh, Shilo, this name Shilo, is not really easier to interpret. A lot of commentators from today and also from past, they interpret um, in different ways. We'll come to this topic back. But I wanted uh, to, uh, to say it right now in the context. So the Mashiach doesn't change the line of the kingship. He confirms um, the rulings of Judah, the Shiloh. The kings from the tribe of Judah are forever, for eternity. Those who follow David will rule forever. But Shiloh will be the one who is the highest kings of this of this kingship. He will fulfill the whole um, passing of the throne of the of the title of the king's title. So when Shiloh comes, comes the fullness. Um, watch out at the last uh, passage of this verse. In eight verse, um, for your father's uh, son will bow down before you. This um, shows us at the Jewish nation. 
from this tribe will come a king who will rule over everything. And at the end of the 10th verse, when Shiloh comes, to him will bow not just the Israelites but all of the nations. There is a difference between Shiloh and the descendant of the tribe of Judah. Before there was a privilege for the kings of Judah to rule over Israel. But when Shiloh will come, he will not rule just over Israelites, but he will rule over all the nations. Over every nation. All of the humanity will be under his rulings. A little bit about the term and the title of Shiloh. I don't want to um, bore you with uh, long descriptions. But I would like to bring your attention uh, to one of the commenters, uh, to one of the rabbis from past. Firstly, um, all of the rabbis believe in unity that this is a prophecy about Mashiach. And um, rabbis from the past um, in unity say and state that Shiloh is one of the titles of Mashiach. So before the, before the creation of the world, this name was for uh, Mashiach. And this was one of the seventh name, one of the seven titles of Mashiach. So Shiloh is the name of Mashiach. Um, it sounds a little bit like a Hebrew word shalom. And maybe it, has also, it also has something in common with Russian word, uh, which in English would mean redeemer. There, there's a lot of interpretation. Um, Part, part of it um, is about the letters of the word. One um, that is used from the uh, old uh, Jewish sources, this commentary says that says that this word is created from different roots of, of different words. And would be, un, uh, would be understood, would be translated as one who rules or one to whom belong the ruling of the whole world. The name, the Shiloh would, would mean so to whom everything belongs, to whom belongs the, uh, the ruling over the whole world. So to whom belong what? The 
kingly ruling, the kingship belongs to him. This is the meaning of the messianic title. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. So this interpretation that he is Messiah and to whom everything belongs, the whole kingship, it's um, this interpretation we can find in one of the midrashes. And also in other old Jewish sources. So here we can find a prophecy about Mashiach, Mashiach to whom um, the whole kingship belongs. So let us look right now on the 11th verse. Binding his fall to the vine, his dunk is called to the choice vine. He has washed his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. It would come back and repeat all over. And it's not just about Messiah himself, but especially about the second coming. In the second book of Moses, in the fourth chapter, uh, we will not read it right now. But um, there is written that Moses uh, puts his sons and his wife in the same way. And Mashiach is like the second uh, Moshe. In the book of Zechariah, Um, said that uh, Mashiach will, will also rule um, on the throne. There is a description of the throne. So this this so this word is also um, um, interpreted as a as a country or state. What what? What is the country of Mashiach? Do we need a quiz? What is the city of Mashiach? No, we don't need a quiz. Um, it's Jerusalem, Jerusalem. We know it already. We know it from the first book of Moses. We know it from the covenant with David. Here is the 
oder demütig. We also read it from him that uh, he, he will come to his city. We, uh, we can read about it from the different passages in the Old Testament. And then we read later uh, that he washes his clothes in wine, and his robes in the blood of grapes. This is a poetic way. Uh, I got lost. This is something that we read about also from the other passages. Um, a, a big king, a big kingship, a freedom. Uh, eternal peace, no wars. Each can sit uh, under his tree, olive tree. The difficult times belong to past. And this is the time of the peaceful rulings in Israel. And also all of the other nations have part in these rulings. The other thing that we read about Mm. The one ha can hope in the messianic deliverance. When one believes, Mm, and it starts with the passage that we just read, so the eleventh one. So the kingdom of Messiah is the kingdom of freedom, a freedom for all of the nations. The time of um, fullness, happiness. I think a lot of you see that I'm not teaching anything new. But I really like this weekly portion of Torah. And this is one of the first and very um, descriptive and also deep descriptions and prophecies of Mashiach. We read in 12 verse, his eyes will be darker than vine, his teeth whiter than milk. There, there will be a good and healthy wine and his eyes can shine as this wine. But not as a drunk. But in his eyes we can see um, a cheerful cheerfulness and a wisdom. And 
the teeth whiter than milk. It, be, it means that those are healthy. When, so when you believe in this, then the Mashiach will come as um, as a wine, as a grape vine. Nothing new for many of you, of you if I uh, state that those prophecies are fulfilled in Yeshua. The beginning of the life of Yeshua We read about him that he is the vineyard. To him belong the Jewish nation. It is written that he is the king of Israel and that he was born to be a king. And every nation will bow down before him, will humble himself. He came to, key, to redeem the Jewish nation, but also to redeem other nations. He, is, he came to give answers to all of the problems of this earth, and he will come again. When he died on a cross, he died as a king of Jews. Over his head, it was written, the king of Jews. When he died on the cross, he fulfilled the prophecy from the uh, from the book of Moses. So, as we read about the final times, we read about him that he is a lion of the tribe of Judah. Everything that we read in 49th chapter of the first book of Moses from the first verse till 12. is written about Yeshua from many perspectives and from many inter, inter interpretation, as we read also in the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And so when we start from the first chapter of Matthew and we end up with the book of Reve Revelation, we should always remember and have it in our mind the 40, 49th chapter of the first book of Moses from 8th verse till 12th. So when you open the book of New Testament for the next time, you will you will see and remember the uh, fulfillment of the messianic prophecy from the first book of um, Moses. When Yaakov was, say, was talking about the future of his sons and when he was prophesying to Judah. And 
he, all, he most probably was also speaking about Mashiach, about Mashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach. The one that was also named Shiloh in this passage. The one that was from the tribe of Judah. The offspring of King David. The descendant of King David. The one to whom belong every kingship over the nation of Israel. And over all of the nations. And for the redemption, Jews and non Jews will come to him. There is no redemption in no one else. It's only in Shiloh. It's only in Yeshua. So, what should we do with that? I, I would like to read you one more verse. A very known one. Um, Gospel of Matthew 28. From verse six, uh, 16 till 20. So the 11 disciples went to the hill in the Galil where Yeshua had told them to go. When they saw him, they prostrated themselves before him, but some hesitated. Yeshua came and talked with them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make people from all nations into disciples, immersing them into the reality of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded to you. And remember, I will be with you always, yes, even until the end of the age. So shortly before um, he has come to his city, to his nation. And through this, he has fulfilled the prophecy. Later, he would um, atone for our sins. And he has died for us. He had become the sacrifice in sake of us. But uh, he also um, rose from death. And later uh, he came to his disciples and they bowed down to him. <laughs> the real Jews. So remember the first book of Moses, chapter 49, from 8 till 12. And Yeshua says to his disciples, All the authority in heaven and earth has been given to Yeshua. So he says, it's not just the kingship over Jews. And not just the kingship over Jews and the other nations 
but his authority is over all of the things that are in heaven, of all of the heavenly things. In the, prophet, in the prophecy from the first book of Moses, we don't read about this. So his authority and kingship is bigger than the one we read about. But this is so, Yeshua says so. Therefore, go and make people from all the nations into disciples. So that the other nations could follow him. That they would be forwarded and that they would be guided um, in the direction of Yeshua. That they could be immersed in water. This is what Yeshua said. This is something that Yaakov prophesied for their future. For us, this is already the reality. For us, this is already the past. This is something that we still wait for. For Israel, there is a king. In this word, there is someone that shall come. His name is Sheila. The one to whom belong all of the authority from him, uh, from uh, heaven and earth. Will hopefully come into the time when his rulings will be filled with uh, joy and happiness. Because Yeshua is already on the way to us, he will come back. But as long as he is on his way to us, let us live according to what he has commanded us because he is our king and we come for redemption to him and uh, let us also um, take care that other people would come to him so today, say to other people, there is a king in this world. In this world, there is a redeemer. And this is Yeshua. All the praise belongs to him. A really big and meaningful chapter. First book of Moses. 44th uh, chapter 49 uh, from 8 till 12 he already came and to him belongs uh, all authority let us follow him in this new year 2021 in and in all of the days of our lives Stay blessed and stay healthy. Shalom.